This is, um, the still you asked me carries so much weight in what you just asked me. <laughs> honestly, Victor, honestly, Max, and I think I even started to make this argument to you the other day, Max. I believe, and I might have to put a D on the end of that word, but just hear me out, that the Dallas Cowboys are legit <laughs> Super Bowl contenders. Repeat that. In the year 2018. <laughs> I don't want to repeat it because wow. I'm not just wow, well. the believe believed is the part we're going to have to get to. <laughs> this team, first of all, it's been criminally underrated. They're two years removed from 13 and three. Last year, during their down year, they were nine and seven. Everybody acts like they've fallen off the cliff. Dak Prescott's the perfect symbol for this. Two years ago, he sets the world on fire, throws only four picks. And now next year, last year, he has an average season. Everybody acts like he's a bust. So there's no capability of having a reasonable view of the Dallas Cowboys. You're all in or you're all out. We know that's the way it is. Love, hate, incapable of seeing reality. But don't worry, folks. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. So what does 2018 look like? I think it looks more like two years ago. They have a defense that nobody, including my good friend Bilger McFarlane, is recognizing how good it is. It's Rod Marinelli in its design now. It's defensive ends, three deep almost, three levels deep, coming at you in waves. It's deep at linebacker. The defensive backfield, the cornerbacks are good. I told you, Max, the only thing missing is a safety. We had that argument the other day. Should it be Errol Thomas? Should it be Eric Reed? The point is this, the defense is good. And I believe in Dak. And I sure as hell believe in Ezekiel Elliott. But all of that offense is built upon the offensive line. First of all, my concern for Travis, Travis Frederick is as a man. I hope he's healthy. I hope he has a long life free of this, I believe it's called Guillain-Barre disease, an autoimmune disease. There have been people like uh, our old friend Mark Schlereth here at ESPN and Todd Archer, reporter for ESPN for the Dallas Cowboys, who've suffered from the same disease and say it takes about a year but you can come back. So we worry about Travis's life, then his career, and then ultimately we worry about the effect on the Dallas Cowboys season. And losing Travis Frederick is huge. It's huge. It's huge that offensive line, the center position is massively important. He's the best in the league. And I do do fear, in all honesty and objectivity, I do think they were a Super Bowl contender. And I do feel like that's probably compromised if Frederick is out for the year. Um, Mm -hmm. Obviously, our thoughts uh, are with Travis Frederick and his family, and, and, and obviously we hope uh, clearly as a, as a human being he can get well and live a long and healthy life. Now, the loss to the Dallas Cowboys is huge, as you mentioned, Will. This team was built around the offensive line. It was, I thought, historically great a couple of years ago, but it regressed last year because of injury and turnover. It wasn't quite the same, and I expect more regression this year. Not only Travis Frederick perhaps being absent for the season, but Zach Martin's dinged up. Um, Lyle Collins is dinged up. You, th you think Zach Martin will be ready to go week one? We'll see if he's 100%. Same thing with Lyle Collins. So you're talking about your center, a guard, and a tackle. You got one from every little uh, sub-position group there on the line. And even just, you know, whether or not they're 100%, just the turn over the line has to it's not just a matter of talent which is compromised but also of cohesion they got to learn to play together now you claim the defense will be good that is your belief but the results the last couple seasons have been it's not been so good they still don't have the war daddy by the way that Jerry Jones was talking Tank about. Tank Lawrence had a 14 picks. sacks Khalil. last year what are you talking about can, can, he's the war daddy yeah, is that Khalil yeah right he's the war daddy if you let me know when you trade for Khalil Mack and then maybe we can talk someone exactly. like that uh, I guess you know, count to 14 defender. 14 you'd lose count at nine Th then what happened in New York City then they're Math? doing all this real quick Vic in a division that is now stacked so they're regressing as the others in the division seem to be progressing one of whom by the way won the Super Bowl last year so bad for the Cowboys uh, there's no other way to spin this. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Max. I feel like as I look at the offense, right, and I look at their roster, especially from a playmaking ability, you lose your Hall of Fame tight end in Jason Witten. Uh, potential Hall of Fame, obviously, he's pretty Hall much a shoo-in. He's a shoo-in at this point. He's one foot in. And you lose your top receiver in Des Bryant. So I'm looking around and, like, where's the production coming from? Where's the big plays coming from? Dak can only do but so much. Obviously, a lot of the onus is on him getting all those guys ready, being they're going to need all hands on deck from a receiver position to get to the places they want to go this year. But I just don't see it. I don't see the big play caliber guys on their roster other than Ezekiel Elliott. But a lot of what he does is predicated on that offensive line, which is an offensive line that is not the healthiest right now. Obviously, we want 
the best for Frederick and have him get back healthy whenever he decides to get back as a person, as a human being. But with Zach Martin being dinged up and just the lack of weapons on the offensive end, I think their defense is going to be great. I think their defense is going to be solid. But I don't know if offensively they'll have enough firepower to compete with the rest of the NFC East. Okay, let's deal with this one at a time. First of all, you're right, I'm right on the defense. Max is wrong. The <laughs> war daddy thing just suggests, Max, that somehow you lost count on your way to 14. Tank Lawrence is an absolute <laughs> must double team. He's destroyed. I don't even know how this escapes your knowledge because you have a, a team in the division. I, I just, how many. Research, can I get how many stats he had against the Giants? <laughs> I'm going to bet it was pretty ugly for you, Max. Tank Lawrence yeah, the worst When the Giants had the worst offensive line in the league. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, by the way, while we're on that note for a moment, it's funny how you talk about cohesion when it comes to the Cowboys' offensive line, but just a few days ago you were talking to me about all the new additions to the Giants' offensive line with complete ignorance towards cohesion. Works for you one day, no, not no, for no, another. No, 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 it's going to take a minute. <laughs> It's going to take a minute, but Will, the point is minute. they couldn't yeah. play any worse than they did uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So the Giants, only, they can correct. only go up. Oh, that's a cute argument. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, and they're all healthy right now, at least. On, on the Giants yes, offensive Yes, on line? the Giants okay. offensive So we've got a couple things going for us. It can't be worse, <laughs> and they're not banged up. The Dallas Cowboys defense is yeah, going to be Yeah, but they're good. also much more talented. Now to the offense that you bring up, Victor. You're, I can't, there's, there's two true things. There's two true statements. One of them concerns me, and one of them doesn't. There are no big playmakers outside of Ezekiel Elliott. That's a fact. You're right. How big a problem will that be during the season? How big a problem would that be in their pursuit of a Super Bowl? I just don't think it's a big a problem, as big of a problem as you do. And I've had this debate with others like Lewis Riddick as well. There's going to be time in a season, he suggests to me, when you need a 20, 25-yard play. Mm -hmm. Where's it going to come from? Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, Ezekiel Elliott, honestly, is that 20-yard play. He's going to be the one ripping off the big plays. And I think his ability sets up play action to distribute that ball to, I don't know, three, four guys that end up with 40 catches on the year.